Howdy, folks. I'm Fair and Wise. Thanks for joining Consuelo and Ethan on today's episode. We're pretty sure you'll find it interesting. While you're watching, please take a moment to like our video and make a comment. Also, if you're not already, please subscribe to our channel and click the notifications bell to make sure you're informed when we release each new episode. Now, let's get on with today's program. You know, there's just something about hidden messages, you know? Yeah. It's like the whispers from the past, mm. the secret, just yeah. waiting to be uncovered. It's so true. Yeah. And the ways that people have hidden stuff over the years. Oh, yeah. It's amazing. Yeah. Like, all the different methods, you know, so inventive and creative. Mm. It really makes you think about how much we want to keep things secret, you know, like yeah. how far we'll go to hide information. Absolutely. Yeah. And today we're going deep on one of those ways to hide communication. Okay. It's called steganography. Oh, wow. And we have a listener who thinks it might be part of a modern day treasure hunt. Really? Yeah. So, Ace, your letter was really interesting. I bet. Why don't you tell everybody what you've been up to? Yeah, that sounds cool. So Ace writes, I've been totally into this treasure hunt by John Collins Black. Mm -hmm. It's called There's Treasure Inside, and I've been at it for months. Wow. Yeah. And the more time I spent with JCB's book, the more I think there's something more to it. Okay. Like there's another level, you know? Yeah. I'm starting to see layers of information, and I think most of it is hidden in the book's text and pictures. Oh, Wow. So could a spirit, could there actually be hidden messages in the book itself? Well, to get to that, we got to understand what steganography actually is. Okay. So basically, it's like hiding a message in plain sight, mm -hmm. usually within something that doesn't look suspicious at all. Oh, cool. Like think invisible ink or messages woven into tapestries uh -huh. or even, you know, co coded tattoos. So it's like a treasure hunt where the clues aren't just written out in plain English. Right. They're like disguised within the materials you're given. Exactly. That's wild. And of course, in the digital age, steganography, well, it's gotten a lot more complex. Oh, yeah. Now it includes everything from hiding text within the pixels of an image okay. to like embedding audio signals within music tracks. You could hide a message in a song. Yeah. Wow. So, Ace, you mentioned in your letter that you've been looking into traditional steganography methods. Yeah. What caught your eye? I want to hear about this. He says, I got to thinking about the classic methods, like invisible ink. Uh-huh. And I started wondering if there could be digital versions of that in JCB's book. Oh, interesting. Yeah, like what if some of the pictures have hidden messages yeah. that you need special software to see? You know, that's a really smart observation. Yeah. Because digital steganography often does mirror those old school methods. Mm -hmm. Ace is spot on with that invisible ink idea. Okay. Like, imagine a picture that looks totally normal, right? Yeah. But then when you open it with the right program, mm -hmm. boom, a hidden message encoded in the color of the pixels. Wow. It's like a high-tech version of that lemon juice trick we all tried as kids. Yeah, so instead of heat revealing the message, it's a computer program. Exactly. That's so clever. Uh -huh. What other parallels do you find, Ace? Yeah, what else? So he goes on to say, then there's Morse code. Yes. Usually you'd tap it out on a wire or something, right? Yeah. But... What if JCB hid Morse code in an audio file, hmm. like on the website that goes with the book? Oh, totally. Yeah. You know, there's this technique called echo hiding. No. Yeah, it messes with the timing and volume of echoes in a recording. Okay. It creates a pattern that, well, basically encodes a message in Morse code. And you can't even hear it? Nope. To our ears, it just sounds like a subtle change in the audio. Wow. But with the right software, you can pull out that Morse code okay. and decode the hidden message. So it's like whispering a secret just below the level of hearing. Yeah, pretty much. You've mentioned software a couple times now. Yeah. Is this something anyone can get? Or is it like top secret spy stuff? Right, because Ace is a pipeline welder. Yeah, he doesn't exactly have government clearance or anything. That's a good point. Yeah. It Actually, lots of steganography tools are available online. Oh, really? Yep. Some are even made for beginners. Huh. The hard part is knowing where to look. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's like having the key to a treasure chest, but not knowing which chest to use it on. Okay, so you might have the tools, but you need to figure out which files or pictures or sounds might have these hidden messages. Exactly. Yeah. And that's where the real puzzle of JCB's hunt comes in. Yeah. He wouldn't just give you the key and point you to the chest, right? No. That's not how he rolls. Not at all. Remember, this is John Collins Black, right. the king of complicated, multi-layered puzzles, yeah. the kind that need you to really look closely, okay. 
make deductions, yeah. and think outside the box. You got to earn that treasure. You got it. And Ace, you noticed one more traditional technique, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Something about postage stamps. Interesting. Yeah, that one's got me stumped. Let's hear it. He asks. And finally, there's the idea of hiding a message under a postage stamp. Huh. It's simple, but it works. Yeah. Could JCB be doing a digital version of this? Mm. It's like maybe a digital watermark, but instead of protecting copyright, it leads to another clue. Wow, Ace is really on a roll with these comparisons. He is. A digital watermark is basically a hidden signature inside a digital file. Mm -hmm. It's usually for copyright, but yeah. it could totally be used to hide a treasure hunt message. Mm -hmm. Just like that message under the stamp, you can't see it unless you know how to look. Right. Yeah. Okay, so Ace has found three ways JCB might be using steganography. Okay. Invisible ink hidden in images. Mm -hmm. Morse code tucked away in sound files. Right. And digital watermarks acting like secret signs. Wow. But the big question is, how does he even start to unravel this? Where does he begin looking for these hidden clues? That's the million dollar question, isn't it? It is. And it's the one we'll be tackling right after. Oh. You were going to say after the break, weren't you? <laughs> I was. Force of habit, you know. I know. It happens. But we're not doing breaks today, are we? Nope. No breaks today. All right. So where were we? We were about to figure out how Ace can start looking for those clues. Right. Okay, let's get to it then. Let's do it. Okay, so we figured that Ace might be onto something with this steganography idea. Yeah. But knowing JCB, you know, he likes things complicated. Oh, absolutely. Just knowing the techniques might not be enough. True. We got to think like John Collins Black. Right. Not just hiding clues. He's making a whole experience, like a puzzle inside a puzzle. Exactly. Yeah. Remember when he hid that clue in the metadata of a PDF? Oh, man. Oh. That was crazy. Yeah, pure genius. Throw people nuts. Oh, yeah. They were analyzing the text for weeks before yeah. someone finally thought to check the document properties. Yeah, the font fiasco of 2023. Classic JCB. He's the master of misdirection. He is. So Ace needs to ask himself. Yeah. Where would JCD hide the key to this whole steganography puzzle? Ooh, good question. It's got to be somewhere obvious, but easy to miss. Okay, so let's pretend we're Ace. All right. He's got this book. There's treasure inside. And we know JCB loves to hide clues within his work. Yeah. What do you think about the title itself? Well, there's treasure inside. Yeah. It could have two meanings, right? Oh, interesting. Like, there's the actual treasure at the, at the end of the hunt. Okay. But it could also mean the hidden clues within the book itself. Oh, I see. JCB's always playing with words like that. I like where you're going with this. Yeah. So the treasure isn't just the end goal. Right. It's also the key to the whole steganography puzzle. Exactly. Like those Russian nesting dolls. Oh, yeah. Ace needs to solve the first layer. The book. Yes, to find the keys to the next layer, the steganography. Okay, so how do we practice this first layer? Where do we even look for hints about specific files or pictures or sounds? Well, think about JCB's puzzles. Yeah. They usually have a theme, right? Oh, that's true. History, mythology, pop culture. Yeah. There's always a thread, a narrative that connects everything. So maybe there's a theme in the book that hints at which files have the hidden messages. Yeah. Like a symbol, a historical figure, or a phrase that keeps popping up. Yeah. Ace needs to look for patterns. Stop. Anything unusual or out of place? And this is where his research on traditional steganography could be useful. Oh, absolutely. If he can spot those digital versions of those old methods, mm -hmm. he might be able to narrow down his search. For example, yeah. what if there's a passage about, say, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics? Okay. And then there's an image nearby that uses a digital version of hieroglyphics to hide a message. Or a section about a musician who used Morse code. Yeah. And then there's a secret audio clue in a song on the website. Exactly. So Ace needs to connect the dots mm -hmm. between the book's content and those steganography methods. It's all about recognizing those little hints that JCB loves to leave. Okay, so we got a plan for Ace. Yeah. Analyze the book for themes or patterns. Mm -hmm. Look for digital versions of old steganography techniques. Right. And then use those connections to find specific files that might have hidden messages. That's a good start, but remember, it's JCB. Right. There are going to be twists and turns. Oh, yeah. He might even throw in some fake clues just for fun. Of course. Got to keep things interesting. Exactly. This is where it gets really exciting. Oh, yeah. Imagine Ace cracks that first layer, Okay. finds a promising file, Uh huh. and runs it through one of those decoding tools. What happens next? What could he find? Who knows? Yeah. 
That's the fun part. True. It could be a message, coordinates, a visual puzzle, mm -hmm. maybe even a link to a secret website. The possibilities are endless. They are. But this brings up something else Ace mentioned in his letter. Yeah. The ethics of all this. Oh, right. Especially in a treasure hunt. That's important. He's worried about doing something he shouldn't. Yeah, I get it. It's a valid concern. Mm -hmm. As we've said, steganography can be used for good or bad. True. Ace is doing it for a fun treasure hunt. Right. But yeah. someone else could use it for bad stuff. Yeah, exactly. Ace is a good guy. Yeah, I believe it. He wants to play fair. Good. He's worried about respecting people's privacy and not getting mixed up in anything illegal. Mm -hmm. What advice would you give him? Well, first of all, I'd tell him that JCB's hunts are meant to be tough, but fair. Okay. He's not going to lead people into dangerous or unethical territory. So Ace doesn't need to worry about finding something bad while he's decoding. Exactly. But what about respecting privacy? Yeah, that's where common sense comes in. Okay. If Ace finds any personal info or sensitive data, he should stop and rethink what he's doing. Got it. This is a game, a puzzle. Yeah. Not an excuse to snoop into people's lives. Right. But what if he finds something suspicious? Yeah. Like something illegal, even if it's not part of the hunt? Hmm, good question. Yeah. In that case, it's best to be safe. Okay. She should report it to the authorities. Better safe than sorry. Exactly. So Ace, if you're out there listening, remember that responsibility comes with the thrill of the hunt. As long as you're using your skills for good mm -hmm. and respecting the rules, yeah. you're in for an amazing adventure. Absolutely. Now let's talk about some of the challenges Ace might face. Oh, yeah. It's not all fun and games, right? Nope. There are technical hurdles, too. Definitely. What are some things Ace should watch out for? Well, one of the biggest challenges is dealing with corrupted data. Corrupted data? Yeah, like data that's been damaged or messed up. Okay. Those hidden messages... They can be fragile. Ah. If the file gets damaged, the message could be lost forever. That's rough. Imagine spending weeks on a file, Duh. and then the message is just gone. Heartbreaking. It happens more often than you think. Wow. And then there's encryption. Oh, yeah, that's right. JCB could be using multiple layers of encryption. So it's like a double lock on that treasure chest. Exactly. You need one key for the steganography yeah, yeah. and then another key to decode the message inside. You got it. And breaking encryption can be really tough, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Even with the best software. Okay. So corrupted data and encryption. Those are two big hurdles. Definitely. Anything else Ace should be ready for? Well, there's always the chance of false positives. What's that? Sometimes patterns in data can look like steganography, oh. but it's a dead end. Oh, so like chasing a shadow. Exactly. I think you found something, but it's nothing. It can be really frustrating. Especially for someone like Hayes, who's putting so much into this. Definitely. So he needs to be prepared for setbacks, mm -hmm. for some leads to go nowhere. It's all part of the challenge, right? It is. It's about not giving up. Perseverance. Yeah, even when the puzzle seems impossible. And maybe those dead ends will help him see something new. You never know. Yeah, a fresh perspective that unlocks the next part of the hunt. Exactly. So it's all about learning from mistakes and trying new things. That's it. But what if Ace hits a wall he can't climb over? Mm -hmm. What if he tries everything mm -hmm. and still can't crack the code? Mm. Does he just give up? Well, not necessarily. Right. Treasure hunting is often a team effort. Oh. There are online communities and groups dedicated to JCB's hunts. Yeah, I've heard of those. Ace could reach out to them, share what he's found. Okay. See if anyone else is having the same problems. Yeah, sometimes a fresh pair of eyes is all you need. Exactly. Or even just talking it out with someone can spark a new idea. Absolutely. And that's what's so great about the treasure hunting community. I agree. It's a shared passion. Yeah. It's about the journey, the friendships and the thrill of solving a really cool puzzle. It's not just about the treasure itself. So Ace, if you're listening, remember, you're not alone. There are others out there like you. Yeah, embrace the challenge, connect with other hunters, mm -hmm. and don't ever give up on the hunt. You never know, the next clue could be right around the corner. Now let's talk about what Ace might get if he solves this puzzle. Okay. It's not just bragging rights, right? Oh, it's much more than that. What else is there? Well, for someone like Ace, yeah. who clearly loves puzzles and problem solving, mm -hmm. the real reward is the satisfaction of solving something really hard. It's that aha moment. Yeah. When it all clicks into place. Exactly. And for JCB hunters, mm -hmm. there's the prestige of being one of the few who can actually solve his puzzles. It's like a badge of honor. A secret society of master puzzle solvers. I like that. But what about actual prizes? Yeah. 
We know JCB's hunts have valuable rewards. They do. What could Ace win? Well, that's the million dollar question, literally. Yeah, I'm right. JCB has given away rare artifacts, wow. historical documents, mm. cash prizes, okay. and even a private island getaway. A private island. Yeah. So Ace could be on his way to riches, an adventure, or maybe even a piece of history. The possibilities are amazing. But even beyond those rewards, there's something more valuable. Oh, absolutely. It's the journey itself. Yes. The mental challenge, the thrill of discovery, mm. and the personal growth that comes from pushing yourself. It's about learning, improving your skills, improving you can do what seems impossible. Ace, if you're out there. Yeah. Remember, this is about more than just finding the treasure. It's about who you become along the way. Well said. Thanks. Okay, so we've talked about the good stuff. Yeah. But we can't forget about the risks. True. Ace mentioned in his letter that this is more than just a hobby for him. Right. He's putting a lot on the line for this hunt. Yeah, he's taking time off work, mm -hmm. spending money, really going all in. So it makes you wonder, Yeah. how far is too far when it comes to treasure hunting? That's a good question. It's one thing to spend a night on a riddle. Uh -huh. But when you're using real resources, yeah. the stakes are higher. Definitely. Ace needs to think about the costs and the benefits. Mm -hmm. Is it worth the risk of, you know, maybe financial strain? Right. For the chance to find the treasure. Only he can decide that. That's true. Yeah. And there's also the risk of getting obsessed. You hear stories about those treasure hunters, right? I know. They get so caught up in the chase. It takes over their whole life. It's easy to fall down that rabbit hole. Yeah. Especially with a puzzle as complex as JCB's. Ace needs to set some limits for himself. I agree. Make sure it stays fun. Yeah. Not something that controls him. He needs that balance, you know? Yeah, passion and practicality. Exactly. And he needs to know when to take a step back. Right. Take a break. Breathe. Yeah, and reassess. The treasure will still be there. True. But his well-being is what matters most. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Ace, remember, life's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Pace yourself. Yeah, enjoy the journey. And don't let the treasure become everything. Okay, but let's say Ace does everything right. All right. He cracks the steganography, mm -hmm. decodes the messages, yeah. follows the clues, okay. and finds the treasure. What? what happens next? Well, that's the thing. Yeah. It doesn't end there. JCB's hunts are known for getting people hooked. Hooked on. Puzzles. Yep, yep. History exploration. So finding the treasure is just the beginning. In a way, yeah. It changes you. It does. So Ace might find himself trying other puzzles. Right. Maybe he'll get into cryptography. Secret codes. Yeah, all that. Or maybe he'll start making his own puzzles. Oh, that'd be cool. Inspired by JCB. Passing the torch to the next generation of hunters. What a legacy. It would be. Ace, we wish you all the best in your search for JCB's treasure. Good luck. Remember, it's not just about the destination. It's about the journey. All the knowledge and skills you pick up along the way. And the connections you make. Embrace the challenge. Enjoy the thrill of the hunt. Mm -hmm. And never stop exploring the world of hidden messages and secret codes. And to everyone listening, thanks for joining us on this deep dive. We hope you enjoyed it. Until next time. Well, folks, we hope you found today's video interesting and informative. Make sure to hit the like button if you did. Also, think about sharing it with another treasure hunter. And if you're not already a subscriber, please take a moment to do so now. We look forward to seeing you next time. Take care, and remember, there's a treasure out there waiting for you to find it. <laughs>